Next up, we're going to cover relationships. And relationships allow us to create a relationship between two tables. So say that we have a post table and then we have a comments table. We know that a post has many comments and we know that a comment belongs to a post. So in our example, we're going to say that a customer has many orders and a order belongs to a customer. So since I know that I want to create a relationship between two tables, right now we only have our customers table. I need to create a new table called orders. So I'm going to create a new migration for our orders table. So I'm going to run the PHP artisan make migration create orders table. And that would help if I spelled artisan correctly. <laughs> so let's go artisan. And there we go. We just created our new migration. So now I have my new migration right here and we have schema create orders. We have an ID and the timestamp. So I know for our orders table, we need specifically two columns and one is going to be the name of the order and the other one is going to be a reference to the specific customer. So we probably would want to have a lot more information inside of this table, but for simplicity's sake, we're only going to include those two columns. So I'll start off by creating a string and I'm going to just call this name. So this is the name of the order. And then I'm also going to create another table with an unsigned integer. And I'm going to call this customer underscore ID. So this is going to refer to an ID of a customer. And that's how we're going to make the relationship. And if you're not familiar with all these different types like string and unsigned integer, you can go over to the Laravel documentation and look at migrations. And let me see if I can quickly find this. Yeah, so you'll see all these different types right here that you can use. ID, foreign ID, big increments, big integer. And you can just go through all these and then read the description over here and it will tell you, you know, how you can use it and when you may want to use it. So now that we have our migration ready, we can go ahead and run PHP artisan migrate. And you'll see that we get the message that we migrated the orders table. So let's jump back over to the database and take a look. So we have our orders here, which has ID, name, customer ID. And of course we have our created at and updated at fields. And these timestamp fields are just default with Laravel and a lot of other frameworks out there do this. It's just a good way to be able to track once that row was created and once it was updated. Okay, so we have our customers. Let's go ahead and just manually add some orders in here. So let's say that we have a new order called, we'll say a new MacBook. And the customer ID, I know that Tony has an ID of one, so I'll go ahead and add that. And now I can say that maybe Tony has another order and I will just say new bike with an ID of one. And let's give an order to, let's say John. So John is going to get a new TV and the customer ID is going to be two. Okay, so I can save that. And if we need to refer to this orders table, remember we need to create a model. So I'm gonna go ahead and create an orders model. So I can run PHP artisan make model order. And now jumping back over to the code, I can look inside of my app folder and I have a new order model right here. So what I could do to just test this out is I could create another closure and maybe I just want to get all the orders. So I can say get orders and I'm just going to create a quick closure just so we can test this out. So I'll say orders equals and remember this is in namespace app slash order and we want to get all those orders. And I'm just going to return a response in JSON format. So I'm going to save that and I will go to application.test slash orders. And you can see in JSON format, we have all the orders 
that are inside of our table. Okay, so now what we want to do is we actually want to list out the customer and then we want to create the relationship so that we say this customer has mul multiple orders and we want to display them out. So let's go ahead and create that relationship. And again, if you need to learn more about relationships and anything in general, you'll want to check out the documentation. So we can check out relationships right here. And I know that the relationship between my customer and orders that a customer has multiple orders, so has many. So I can go here and say one to many. And I can see that I can use this return has many. So if we had a post table, we would say that the post has multiple comments. But in our case, where we have a customer table and that customer has orders. So I'm going to create a function called orders that returns many orders. So I will go back to my customer model and create a new function called orders. And I'll return this. Let's see, that says has many. And we have many app slash order. Okay, so let's jump back over to our home view. And you can see here that we're listing out all of our customers, but maybe we also want to list out their orders. So what we can do is actually we can run another for each and check this out. I can say customers or customer orders as order. And maybe in here, I just want to create a paragraph tag and list out the order name. And actually, I think a P tag inside of a list item is a no-no, so I'll make this a span element. And I may also want to add a break right there. Let's take a look at this. So if we go back here, reload, get unexpected colon. And where does it say that this is at? Return this mini. And of course, let's go back to customer. We need that missing semicolon right there. Now, if I reload, you can see that we have Tony, new MacBook, new bike. And John has a new TV. And then we see Mike and Mike does not have any orders. So this is great because now we've just created the relationship from the customer to the orders. And we can also create the inverse of that relationship to say that an order belongs to a customer. So to do that, I could go back here and I could say we have one to one, one to many. And I know that this is actually going to be the one to many, but it's going to be the inverse of that. So we have one to many inverse, which is the belongs to. So this is essentially what I want to have inside of my order model. This is going to say that this order belongs to an app slash customer. So now once I were to list out all the orders that I had, let's run this again. We'll say orders equals app slash order all and maybe I'll just loop through each of these so I'll say for each orders as order so for every single order I'm just going to echo out a paragraph with the order name and then I'm going to say belongs to customer and then I'll say order customer name. And as long as I don't have any syntax errors here, we should be able to go to our application.test slash orders. Yep, and you'll see here that we have each of these orders. The new Mac MacBook order belongs to customer Tony. The new Mi bike belongs to customer Tony. And the new TV belongs to customer John. So this is great because now we can create relationships between our tables and it just makes interacting with the data so much easier.
Hey, thanks for checking out this video series on Laravel 7 Basics. Uh, I just wanted to say thanks for watching this series, and I also wanted to ask you to give me a follow on Twitter, at T-N-Y-L-E-A. I also wanted to take just a second and let you know about one of my courses that I created called SAS Adventure. And you can visit it at sasadventure.io, and this is a 21-day program that will teach you how to create your own software as a service using the Laravel framework. So if you want to support me, go ahead and uh, check out my course at sasadventure.io, and I will see you in the next video.